Hello there, minions. It's Wheezy again. Today, I'm going to talk to you about another hardware video. We're going to discuss an HDMI KVM switch and how you can incorporate it into your computer slash video game console setup to make switching input sources for video and audio and keyboard and mouse a lot easier, including I'm going to show you how I test it out actually getting keyboard and mouse KVM switching to work with the PlayStation 5. So it's really interesting. It might be something very valuable for your setup. So let's go and talk about it. Okay, so before we get started, I actually wanna say thank you to TE Smart, who actually contacted me uh, and said that they had a new KVM switch that they wanted me to test out and see if I wanted to make a video about it. And I'd already been, been considering adding a KVM switch to my setup because of some strangeness that I have with how my video is set up and how Windows gets confused and switches my monitors around. I'll explain that all in the video coming up. But when they reached out and said, hey, would you like to try this KVM switch? I was like, hell yes, I would, because I've already been thinking about it. So they sent it to me and uh, I got it set up and tested it out. So I'm gonna show you all about how it's set up, what it can do, what it can't do. And we're also gonna talk about some cool things that it technically says it doesn't support, but you can actually get it to do some really cool stuff. So let's go and take a look at all of these different features. Okay, so let's jump over and do a quick unboxing real quick of the TE Smart HDMI KVM switch. Uh, inside, we've got the user's manual. Looks like it's got uh, all the features and a bunch of connection diagrams, keyboard hotkeys, good stuff. We've got the actual switch itself. Let's take a peek at that real quick. Oh, I decided to grab the red one <laughs> instead of the black one, and that has got a nice little textured glossy finish on it so it's like the ir or the selection lights up front the ir blaster manual selector power audio out uh, inputs power hdmi out hdmi and usb in one and two the keyboard and mouse port and the usb 2.0 port i'm not entirely certain i think that's for an additional peripheral so we'll figure all that out when we get it set up. Let's see what else we've got in here. Nice packaging. Remote for switching the KVM switch. Remotely. Uh, oh, that's nice. It comes with two bundled cables. So it is HDMI plus USB. Um, are they actually fused? Looks like these cables are actually fused together so that they run together. That's kind of nice. So I got cables included for connecting the PC. So the only thing that it won't have, and then it's got a power supply. So the only thing it doesn't have is the HDMI output cable, which if you're connecting this to a display device, you've already got <laughs> an HDMI cable. Um, but it's nice that it comes with both of the uh, computer hookups. So. We're gonna go through, get this uh, hooked up, and uh, talk some more about it. All right, so let's talk about one of the things that I'm excited about uh, for this KVM switch. Um, and that is, even without the PC part, I'm gonna show you what happens to my primary monitor, um, which I have two inputs hooked up to it. I have the uh, output from the computer hooked up to the monitor as one input. And then the other one goes to the output from my video game console switch. So the Xbox, PlayStation, uh, PS4 Pro, like all of those, uh, that's not, or that's just the regular, not the Pro, um, are hooked up through a switch. So that is the other input here. So for instance, if I turn on the PS5, right, then I switch this over to another input. Keep in mind where those windows are. So I switch this to input two. Come on. <laughs> da, 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 da. PlayStation. So 
uh, everything's all well and good. My windows are all where I left them. However, once I'm once I'm done and I decide to switch back to my PC input, Windows 10 gets super confused and all of my monitors just kind of freak out and all of my windows get shuffled around and replaced. So this KVM switch should make it so that when the input to this monitor is switched, it's the computer still thinks that this monitor is active so that when I switch back, it shouldn't do all of this and move all my crap around, which I'm super excited about because every time I switch over to play a game and switch back, this happens. So that's one of the things I'm going to look at when I hook this up, as well as just its general uh, KVM functionality. All right, so we now have the KVM switch hooked up. Right now, I'm only running through HDMI cables because I just want to test my computer and monitor uh, with the output from my consoles. So now, instead of having the two, uh, the, this is the output from my PC, and this is the output from my uh, console switch, so it's the PS5 right now, and this is the uh, input to the switch, which is the output, sorry, is the output from the switch to the monitor. So now, instead of the monitor having two different inputs hooked up, instead of me having to go through the menu to change the input now, the switch is handling the video input, so if I just hit this button, now we should switch over to the PlayStation. Fantastic. Now if we switch back, oh, it switches back to the PC, and none of my windows is not confused, none of my windows have been dumped around, and everything is right where I left it. So I am super, super excited. So let's let's do some real magic. Let's take KVM switch over to PlayStation. Let's turn on the Series X. And then let's switch over our other switch over here to input two, which is the Series X. And watch this switch. Series X, yes. Switch the KVM. Back to the PC and my windows haven't moved. Oh my goodness. Well, this is already going to make my, my quality of life so much better. Let's switch back to the PlayStation. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so one more thing we just want to check just to make sure, because it looks right. <laughs> Let us make sure that we are still running at our 4K resolution. So video output, uh, video output information. So we are running at 4K, 60 Hertz with 422 HDR. So this supports full HDR. Um, I have HDCP off right now. But look at that, HDR supported, all the frequencies supported, non-HDR. So this switch is fully passing through and supporting all of the resolutions for the PlayStation. You know what, just because we're already here, let's go ahead and check and make sure it's the same for the Xbox. So, supports HDR. Doesn't support Dolby Vision. So we got 4K, 10 bit, 24, 50 hertz, 60 hertz. So bingo bongo. This bad boy is all good. So let's turn this console off. Back to PC. Everything's where it should be. So already, this thing gets an A rating for me. I'm going to go ahead and test. The actual KVM, KVM stands for Keyboard, Video, and Mouse. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and test the KVM functionality of it as well. But already, this is this is say, this has made my life so much better. So obviously, this is a temporary setup. I'll make it a little home back there uh, that is nice and happy. And I'm also going to play with this audio output port, which I'm also very excited about, and I'll explain why. All right. So now we have the switch hooked up as an actual KVM switch. I've got 
Uh, one half of it hooked into the back of my desktop PC there. The cables they included are nice in that the HDMI and the uh, USB part portions of the cable are significantly long enough that you can, even though my HDMI port is down there. Let me see if I can turn this light on. Even though my HDMI port is down here on my video card and the USB port that I have it plugged into is way up there, there is enough natural separation in this cable, I didn't even have to peel this back more than it already came included, for it to plug in in both locations without a problem, which was nice. Um, and so I've got that plugged into here and you can see my computer still in the normal setup. Here I have my laptop. It is plugged in as the other input slash output to the KVM switch. Um, so right now, and I'm gonna point out something interesting. Right now this mouse and keyboard, these are wired and wireless, but I've taken out the wireless dongles. As you can see here, there is no man behind the curtain. Um, so they are operating in full wired mode. So you can see my mouse moving around up here. And uh, and then my keyboard, my, all right, so I can notepad, hello. One interesting thing to note here uh, is that this is a mechanical gaming keyboard, which the description for this item specifically says it does not support this, um, which, is why I have it hooked up in the, oh, as I accidentally click on the input switch, which is why I have it hooked up in the USB 2.0, that port that I didn't know what it was for, for like an extra peripheral, I have it hooked up in there instead of in the keyboard port, because if I hook it up in the keyboard port, let me fumble around with it. So if I hook it up in the keyboard port, this keyboard, does not work. It's not recognized. It doesn't do. It doesn't do anything. Now, at first, I thought maybe that's because um, maybe something was wrong with this keyboard port because the thing doesn't even the keyboard doesn't even light up. But as it turns out, I have a dumb keyboard because <laughs> I'm a nerd and I have such things. So this basic keyboard. Ugh. Okay, so if I hook up this basic keyboard instead of my mechanical gaming keyboard, then you can see that it works just fine. All right, hello. And I will go ahead and switch over the KVM switch to the laptop. So you can see I have this set to, I believe it's just duplicating the main display. Yep. So now this keyboard again will work just fine. All right, so normal keyboard, but interestingly enough, the mouse works just fine. So that my gaming mouse works just fine. And not only that, but the DPI settings, the adjustable DPI settings also translate. So that all works just fine, plugged in straight through the port there. Um, and then, but with my gaming, my gaming keyboard, if I plug that boy into the USB 2.0 port instead of the keyboard port, then it just treats it like a normal USB peripheral. And it works just fine. So when you're toggling between I believe that sound that you're hearing is the fact that it's being treated not as a keyboard and mouse, but as a peripheral. So that's probably the keyboard um, being switched back and forth. But as you can see here, it works just fine. And even the additional uh, function keys and stuff still work. So if, uh, if you have a gaming or a mechanical keyboard, it's not officially supported by the keyboard part of the switch but it will plug in just as a peripheral and it works just fine uh, between the two. So as far as a KVM switch, this thing is working just fine. So just for my own curiosity, 
Let's plug in the wireless dongles and just see what happens. Okay, so somewhat as I expected, um, the wireless dongle also only works in that USB 2.0 port, uh, which means you would either need a small little USB hub to do both wireless dongles in there. Um, but I have, so I have this wired just because it only has the one port and I have the keyboard hooked up as wireless since it has to be hooked to the USB port anyway. So it's running completely wireless right now. And you can see on the one screen, it's working just fine. Switch over to the laptop. Scooby-doo-doop-doop. -doop -doop. And it works just fine there too. So good to know. Some gaming keyboards will even have like a pass through so you can like daisy chain them. Um, so if you have a gaming keyboard and you're interested in a KVM switch, this can still work given, you know, kind of the caveats that I've explained. But uh, the pro like I said, the product description on this is clear that it doesn't work with the mechanical uh, keyboards or advanced keyboards, but with a basic keyboard, it works just fine on the normal KVM switch. And with, it looks like essentially any USB 2.0 device, it will also switch that too. So if you have a keyboard and a mouse and a different USB 2.0 peripheral that you want to switch back and forth between the two, like, I don't know, a flash drive, then I, 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 I mean, I, that's just a, just going over USB. It's a USB A to USB B uh, port. So as far as it, a KVM switch, it also works a treat. And same thing when you switch back, it doesn't trick Windows 10 into thinking that all the devices have changed and everything's still right where I left it. So this thing works exactly as advertised, fantastic, full 4K. Matter of fact, an interesting note here is that this laptop's display is not 4K, but when I switched it over to the HDMI output, it actually uh, allowed me to switch the external display to 4K even though 1080 is what's recommended because that's my native display on this laptop. So that was interesting. I mean, I, mean, I can, I mean, I guess I've, I've hooked this to a 4K display before, so I guess I knew it did that, but it is nice to know that the Switch also supports that. The Switch will support 4K output from a laptop that supports 4K output from its graphics card, even if it doesn't have a 4K display. So yeah, everything, Everything works great. I'm excited to get this nestled very nicely in here and wired up cleanly so it's not just a big nest of wires, but the TE Smart KVM switch, uh, I mean, I, I'm so, I can't even explain how relieved I am to not have my windows jump around anymore. It's, ugh. Now I've heard that Windows 11 is gonna help correct this, but Jesus, I mean, when will that be something that you have? This works right now on Windows 10. Okay, so one more interesting thing, because I'm a mad lad, I was just curious, I wanted to try it out. So I've got this KVM switch, uh, the other input hooked directly into the PlayStation 5, and I wanted to see if I could get the keyboard and mouse working through here. So again, I have this gaming keyboard hooked through the USB 2.0 port. And as you can see, it has recognized that I have a keyboard attached. So you know what? Let's unplug it from the USB 2. Keyboard disconnected. And let's plug the mouse into that and just see what happens. Oh, don't slide off there. Oh, interesting. So in the USB 2.0 port, it'll recognize the mouse. Oh my. So now, <laughs> Now I'm gonna go crazy. I'm gonna plug in a USB hub here and see if I can get them both to be recognized. Okay, so holy from all the wholeness means, I don't know if you can see from there, but this cheap keyboard and my gaming mouse are hooked into this. Can you see the hub over there? This USB hub behind there. This USB hub over here. Um, this did not work with my mechanical gaming keyboard, unfortunately, but with my mouse, and this normal keyboard, if I switch over 
to the PlayStation 5, who's using this keyboard? I am. Holy for holy moles. <laughs> so the same keyboard and mouse I was using. Is there... Does Windows bring up the PlayStation? I don't know how to bring up the PlayStation menu on the keyboard. So you can see this is my PlayStation, and I'm not the first person to use the keyboard and mouse on a PlayStation, obviously. But am I the first person stupid or crazy enough to use a keyboard and mouse uh, through a KVM switch on their PlayStation so that they can effortlessly switch back and forth from working on their computer to poning nebs right in the face? Keyboard. It does, obviously, this USB 2.0 port is connecting, but. But oh my goodness, I, <laughs> and uh, you can see in here, the options I can switch for controls, back to controller. So can I, so can you like match make <laughs> as a controller player and then be like, lols, JK, <laughs> keyboard and mouse, yo. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm still a bit of a controller faithful, but but dude, like that's that's cool. Well, okay, so with a simple little USB hub, this KVM switch will in fact do a simple keyboard and mouse switch between that. Your mechanical gaming keyboard unfortunately won't work, but what does work is the DPI adjustment on my mouse. So there's, there's low DPI, there's higher DPI, there's my highest DPI, look, Jesus! So even the DPI adjustments on my gaming mouse work. All right, I am, I am impressed. I don't even know how to, how to throw a frag grenade on G. <laughs> All right, so the last thing that I want to check out on this switch is this handy dandy little audio output port on the front. Now, the HDMI uh, cables each carry audio as well. HDMI, high definition multimedia input or uh, multimedia interface. Multimedia means video and audio. So these will actually carry audio too, which means I've got my speakers, uh, my speakers here hooked up to this audio cable. So when I plug this in here and I got my PlayStation on the screen, you will hear that is now the PlayStation audio that is coming out of my speakers from this output. It's actually pulling it directly out of this uh, HDMI cable. So if I switched over to the computer, then um, I will also, let's go ahead and just pull up something here. You will notice that by default, I have the output on my computer set to my normal speakers, right? Not to go through the HDMI to this monitor. Um, so I actually have an audio switch set up here. So if I switch that to directly the speaker audio output from my PC, then you will see Ooh, that I've got the audio there. That's one. Now, if I switch this back over here, then that's going to the HDMI audio output from this. So if I go over here and I switch my audio output from speakers to this monitor, then when I play this, um. You'll hear the audio. It's even actually All nicer right. quality coming Let's out of this, fuck with this shower, huh? <laughs> than directly out of that. Uh, although I guess it's turned up there. Um, you can see that the audio comes through here. So now if I have this set to go through this HDMI, then the audio is there. And if I switch over, then it effortlessly switches back to that. So if you've got your, configure your computer to put the audio through the HDMI for that monitor, then it will also switch the audio source for that if you hook your speakers to the KVM switch. An extremely handy feature, and I'm definitely gonna be taking advantage of this because I have a bit more of an advanced audio setup. So being able to pull the console audio uh, out of this switch as well into my speakers so that if I don't wanna wear headphones, um, I can still have audio coming through my computer speakers. Really nice feature. All right, minions, hopefully you found that helpful and informative. I honestly, am stunned that I actually got keyboard and mouse KVM switching working with the PlayStation. I may have to play around with that and do more keyboard and mouse on consoles. I didn't test it specifically with the Xbox Series X, but I guarantee you it'll work 
probably even better than it does on the PlayStation just because Microsoft consoles play much more nicely with PC features. Um, so it's amazing. It's already nestled into my setup. I'm excited that I have it now and I can use it and my windows aren't going to jump around anymore. Uh, if you guys want to check it out and want to try it out in your setup, um, there's going to be links down below. Uh, thanks again to TE Smart for hooking me up with this KVM switch and like literally making my life easier. So, um, Make sure you go check it out if you're interested. Uh, if there's any other feedback you guys have on uh, or questions about a KVM switch versus traditional HDMI switchers or stuff like that, leave comments and stuff and I'll reply to all that stuff. But uh, I'm just really excited that I have my setup. You know, I love growing my setup and getting it more and more uh, locked in. So uh, thanks for watching this and I will see you guys in the next one.